Resulting from all of these experiments and the time spent on research and having surpassed the Coulomb energy when Z is 40% greater than that of bismuth, which is the heaviest stable element, we are now witnessing the exceptional longevity of nuclei. At the very edge of stability, due to the high Coulomb barrier and shell effects, the ground state increases, a fission barrier appears, and therefore super-heavy elements do exist. The fundamentals of the modern theory concerning the mass limits of nuclear matter have also obtained experimental verification. And what exactly did we see? Fifty years ago, being here, the heaviest known nucleus was nobelium. Its mass was 254, and over the years we have seen a rise to a mass of 294. And I'd like to say that a nucleus with a mass of 294 has been obtained twice. Once as an even-even nucleus, in the reaction between Californium-249 and Calcium-48, and the second time as an odd-even nucleus resulting from a combination of Berkelium-249 and Calcium-48. The even-even nucleus had a half-life of 0.7 milliseconds, while the odd-even nucleus had a half-life of 50 milliseconds. We went from 50 seconds in 1960 to 50 milliseconds in 2010. It is quite obvious that the nuclear stability limit is still far off. I would like to share an entertaining story about the elements with you. This picture shows how heavier and heavier elements were discovered over the years. But this was always associated with some advancement in science and technology. It all started with the discovery of nuclear fission, the discovery of spontaneous nuclear fission, the discovery of actinide chemistry, the creation of nuclear reactors, and the synthesis of heavy elements up to element 100 by the neutron method. And then this point was reached where, as you might remember, fermium-258 has a very short half-life. The next stage involves the use of accelerators, and the red dots already depict the acceleration era. This here is the reactor era, this is the acceleration era, and here, in 1962, spontaneously fissioning isomers were discovered. The discovery of spontaneously fissioning isomers began an assault on the droplet model, created a new microscopic model, and based on this model, the existence of superheavy elements was predicted in 1969. Just a few years later, cold fusion reactions were discovered along with calcium-48, and in 1976, calcium-48 was first accelerated. When it was confirmed that these reactions work well, recoil nuclear separators, vacuum separators, such as the velocity selector in Darmstadt called shells, and Vasilisa here in Dubna, as well as gas-filled separators, all of which are still in operation, made it possible to obtain these six elements shown as green dots. After this period of rapid advancement, scientists looked to the future with great pessimism. And there were reasons for this. Despite a very good approach with calcium-48 and a reactor, its consumption was very high. But this problem was solved by the so-called ECR source, which made it possible to greatly reduce the consumption of calcium and obtain higher intensity beams. This immediately made it possible to synthesize six more elements from reactions with calcium-48. 
These are already classified as super heavy elements and are located on the island of stability. They are insular, while all the previous elements were located on the mainland. They have a long lifetime and will be studied by chemical methods. Through these methods, element 112, the one which was obtained with calcium-48 and has a lifetime of 3.6 seconds, was analyzed. Now the question is, what comes next? You will have to come to our next lecture to find out. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>